it's just a part of the job. You come in right in the morning, you still probably got your coffee, you're getting ready to check the campaigns because you're excited about what the performance looks like, and you look and all the conversions are flatlined. There's nothing coming in and it's not quite clear why. Unfortunately, this has happened to me many times in my career and it seems like every time there's always some other weird outstanding reason as to what happened. But in this video, we wanna talk about what you do when conversion tracking in your Google Ads account breaks so you can get it back online as quickly as possible. For this video today, we're gonna to be hopping in and out of a number of different client accounts and back to slides, just because I wanna show you some real world scenarios of where conversion tracking has broken or where we've seen some of the culprits of performance shifts. So the account you're looking at right now is an example of exactly this that happened to me earlier in 2025. Unfortunately, I was on vacation and I went and looked at one of the client accounts in the days, kind of in the middle of the trip, just checking in. And I saw this green line here. We had been going pretty steadily throughout the course of the month, seeing lots of conversions over a hundred a day. And all of a sudden on Wednesday, things dropped off. And then on Thursday, nothing came through. Now, the recording of this video is in December of 2025, and many of the conversions that you see here for the period of Wednesday through the end of the week were conversions that came through after the fact, maybe a few weeks afterward while the conversion attribution window was still open. But what I saw was a flat line. There were no conversions on any of these days when I checked on Saturday the 19th is the day that I checked. So obviously something was up. So let's walk through the different things that I would do when I see performance that looks like this. I'm not gonna take you to client websites for this. We're gonna jump around in some of our Paid Media Pros examples, but quite frankly, the first thing that I do when I see something that looks like this, I'm just gonna go to the website. I wanna know if the website is down or if it's working or what have you. So this is our super not attractive Paid Media Pros website, but it did load. So that tells me that the website is not down. Now you might be asking, doesn't Google ads alert me and turn my ads off when my website is down? And although you do get the occasional destination URL not working error in Google ads because something is shifting to a 404, unfortunately, it doesn't always work and it doesn't always work right away. So if you notice that your conversions have flatlined, just check to see if the website's even working before you do anything else. About a quarter of the time, the website itself is down and that's causing the issues. But as you can see here, Paid Media Pro's website worked for this example. So we're gonna say that's not it. So now that we've confirmed that the website is working, the second thing I'm gonna look at is if there was any changes in tracking. Now, although conversions flatlined in the platform, that doesn't mean that we can't find some information there. Back in this account where everything flatlined, if you head over into goals and the summary page, and then if you skip this original setup and go to view all conversion actions, you're gonna get a screen that looks like this. I know some of these are blurred out, apologize for that. But one thing that's gonna be an easy problem to pinpoint is going to be if you see inactive or no recent conversions. It'll tell you when the last conversion was recorded and if that coincides with when your conversions dropped off in your campaigns, that could be what's causing the issue is that your conversion tracking is gone. But one thing to note is just because you don't have any conversions in your campaigns does not mean that your pixel won't track conversions when they happen. So if I head into a different account real quick, there are some scenarios where you'll see a status of active or even needs attention, even if that conversion action has flatlined in the platform, but it's because it is tracking leads from other sources. The secondary conversion action here is active. And yes, technically this will not show in the conversions column because it's secondary, but there have been times in the past where a conversion action does not show any data in the platform, but will show active and that everything is working properly because somebody from either organic or some other source has converted on that action. So the tag has been fired, but we're not getting any credit in the Google Ads campaigns because they weren't part of that conversion flow. So depending on what you find in this tab, you either need to go fix your conversion tracking or we need to look elsewhere. One thing I love is that if you're using Google Tag Manager, and again, this is our Paid Media Pro's Google Tag Manager container, so it's not gonna show a lot. But right on the Overview tab, you can come over and see which version of the container is live and when it was last modified. In the account that I showed you earlier when conversions flatlined, 
everything started to happen on Wednesday, July 16th. So if I were to come in here and the version of Google Tag Manager that's live, if it was published on Wednesday, July 16th, you better believe I'm gonna be looking into what was changed, how it's impacting my conversion tracking, and odds are this is probably going to be the problem. But let's say we don't find any issues here. Nothing has been changed in Google Tag Manager during the time frame that we're seeing the conversion drop off. The next thing could also be, did the pixel get removed from the site in the first place? Now, if there weren't any changes during the time frame where conversions flatlined, that doesn't mean that tracking isn't the problem. There's still one scenario where tracking could be an issue. I'm back on the Paid Media Pros website, as you can tell. And even though you can't see it, I actually have the Google Tag Assistant extension in my browser. And if I click on that, it will reload, we'll scroll down, but it will tell me all of the different tags that are on the site. I can see the Google Tag Manager container that we use to fire conversions here. I can also see the different Google tags that are available either through the GA4 platform or through AdWords. This is a super easy way to tell, did somebody remove the Google Tag Manager container or the Google tags from the website without telling you? that's not going to show in Google Tag Manager, and it also won't show in Google Ads. So if somebody removed it or made it stop firing, it will be very obvious here as to what's happening, and you'll be able to reach out to the client, ask them what happened, and request that you get tagging added back onto the site. But let's say all of these tags are exactly how they should be, which for the Paid Media Pro site it is. The last thing I do from a technical perspective is I just look and see if the form works. On our website, we have a book a call feature to where you can request half hour consulting. We also have a CS speak form where you can go through and fill out a form, get in touch with us about whatever you need. So it looks a little bit more like a traditional form. If I see that all of the other tagging issues and everything else on the site is working properly from a technical perspective, next, I'm just gonna fill out a form that I know should fire the conversion action and make sure that everything is working properly. And bonus points, I'll probably also come in and use the preview feature within Google Tag Assistant to make sure that everything is firing properly. So down here, I just put in the Paid Media Pro site. I clicked connect, and now you can see that the Tag Assistant is connected. And if I go back into Google Tag Manager, it's going to walk me through all of the different tags that were fired and weren't as I use my test form to make sure that everything is firing properly. If I go through and run a test form and everything looks good on the website, my tags firing, all that good stuff. Now we're getting away from the idea that there's a technical issue because tracking's working, the website's working, the conversion tracking on the website is working. Now we need to start looking into some other things. But first let's do a quick recap. In no particular order, here are the four things we just went through when conversion tracking just flatlines. We're gonna check and make sure that the website is actually working. We're going to see if there are any changes in the tracking or if we're still counting conversions from other sources, just not our campaigns. We're going to look to make sure that the pixel is still on the site. And if it is, then we're going to test and make sure that the form itself works and that conversion tracking is working with the form when it's actually filled out. All of these cover the technical aspects of how conversion tracking is set up. So this is going to be the first place that I look to make sure that everything is working properly. Once we've confirmed that all the technical aspects of the account are working well, now I'm going to start to look into performance shifts. I'm going to see if there's an answer in the data itself to try and figure out what's going wrong here. So obviously we've got a big adjustment in the number of conversions. So odds are conversion rate is probably also going to flatline. But as we can see here, the cost itself is pretty stable. So there's not really a huge difference that would cause that in the data here. But while keeping the conversion number on here, I'm just going to start to look and see if there's any big shifts in any of these other metrics. So obviously cost looks fine. What about clicks? Definitely saw a decrease in clicks day over day. So that's interesting. I wonder if click through rate went down. Sure did. Went down just a bit here into the 1% range. Okay. Cost per conversion obviously is going to change quite a bit. Cost per click does look like it jumped a bit. So all of that is pretty interesting. Still all around the same day though. So nothing really happening other than that day. Search impression share, that all looks pretty even. So maybe we can say that there's something that has to do with the clicks and the attractiveness of the campaigns. And to be quite honest, these shifts and the cost per click, click through rate, that sort of thing, they're really not huge. Cost per click went from what, $2 up to $4. So it did go up a little bit. Click through rate, went from kind of an average of the mid twos 
down to the mid ones, maybe low ones. So that's not great. Now let's look to see if we need to add any other metrics. What about like impressions just in general? See what the number of impressions did during this time frame. It's gonna get added all the way over here. Take one of these off, add impressions. Number of impressions went up quite a bit. So that's interesting. So now I'm just gonna dig into the campaigns and see what I can come up with. It's probably gonna be easiest for me to find a date range. So we'll say the 17th through the 19th, since that would have been the day that I was looking at. That's kind of when conversions fully flatlined. And then I'm just gonna go back and look at the prior same days in the previous week. So here, let's say 17th to 19th, and then compare. And I want to look at a custom range. So I'm gonna say that. I'm gonna come in this field, click the 10th, through the 12th and click apply. Now let's get the campaigns that actually have the performance data in here. But the next thing I'm gonna to start to do is look and see what types of trends we can find in the performance here. Is there anything that stands out in any single campaign that would explain what's going on? And now outside of these individual statistics, I'm gonna start looking at different aspects in the account as well. If I find any trends, I also wanna to look to see if there's any change in the network, especially that has to do with search partners. This account has nothing to do with search partners. There's nothing in here, but every once in a while, you're gonna notice that search partners really takes off or takes over all of the spending when a new partner was added. So make sure that you're always checking your networks. If you have a performance max campaign, you might also wanna check the network performance report where you can see which networks are driving the majority of impressions, clicks, performance for that Performance Max campaign. That is a newer report and Joe did a video on it. So if you wanna check that out, it's at the top of the screen right now. But then some other things I'm gonna look at, I'm gonna come in and check in on the Auction Insights and see if there were any changes in the competitors during this time frame. Auction Insights doesn't necessarily play nice when it comes to comparing date ranges. So instead, I would probably just look to see week over week if anything changed, if anybody moved. You can also put your Auction Insights into a visual chart if you download the data a little bit differently. In the past, I have done a video that shows how you can see the trend lines with Auction Insights. Again, you can check out that video at the top of the screen right now. But for now, let's assume Auction Insights didn't have anything to do with it. Another place I'm going to look is also in the Insights and Reports section, and that's going to be the Search Terms Report. Again, sorry these all have to be blurred, but I want to see if there are any key performance trends that are different in these two still comparison timeframes for individual search terms since the majority of this account is running on search. If I find any patterns here, or maybe all of a sudden a new search term popped up, started taking over all the traffic and just stopped converting, maybe that's something I need to add as a negative keyword. I'll get all of my performance back and everything will be honky-dory. But if there's nothing that I see here, no big red flags that I see in this performance, the last thing I'm gonna do performance-wise is try to take a look at seasonality. And we're gonna hop into a different account for that. Now, because we're in a different account, we're not gonna try and investigate the same drop-off in conversions that we saw in the July of 2025 this year. But instead, if you're trying to look at seasonality for your conversions dropping off, you might notice little trends that look like this. We've got this red line, things kind of go up and then they go down as we get into the latter part of the year and then they start to come back up. And then again, end of the year, things dip come back up. We're just looking for visual cues here. Now, obviously the red line that we were just looking at was cost. And then we have conversion rate in here as well. But if in this account, we saw a flat line in conversions in maybe October, something like that, we could probably say maybe it has something to do with seasonality because October, November tends to be a bit lower than other months as we can tell over the past few years. So if we see any seasonality issues, it might make sense for us to just hold and wait and see if performance will come back, but that's only if we see indicators of that in the platform. So while it might not be an exhaustive search, here are the different performance changes that I'm gonna look at to try and see why conversions are down. Were there any large shift in any specific metrics? Did we see any network changes, any changes in the auction insights? What about search terms? Was there any seasonality at play? All of these things are just trying to help us identify why conversions are down. So at this point, we've checked through all of the different technical features. We've also looked through the performance shifts, trying to understand why conversions are down. 
So the next question is, now what? So the first thing I'm going to do, if I still don't have an answer after I've checked through all of those things, is I'm going to email the client. But I'm not going to email them until I have done my due diligence on all of those technical aspects and all the different performance shifts. The last thing I want to do is bring a problem to the client without an answer. What I would rather do is email them and say, hey, I noticed conversion tracking is down. I ran these tests. Looks like somebody on your side, ideally you have an email address, removed the Google Tag Manager container from the site or published changes in Google Tag Manager that's causing issues. Can you make them not do that? And can you fix it so we can get it back up and running? Whatever you need to have in the email, you want to be able to provide a solution as well as presenting the problem and making them aware of it. But then depending on what you find, you might need to just let those changes ride because if there's no technical reason that the campaigns are down, you can't necessarily find any performance shifts. It just might not be apparent just yet. So you might need to let it ride for just a little bit because as much as we want to get conversions back on track, it might end up hurting the account more if you make large changes before actually knowing what's going on. But then once it's time to do it, we need to start making adjustments to accommodate. And that's always going to be dependent on what the problem was in the first place. Depending on the timeline of when your campaigns could get fixed, and this is going to be dependent on what the cause of the drop off was, I'm always going to suggest pausing campaigns for a short period of time. It's going to end up saving you funds. It's going to end up making your performance not look terrible. And if anything, you're playing the conservative card and usually clients like that. The exceptions to the rules of pausing campaigns is that if it's only going to take like maybe 15, 20 minutes, maybe up to an hour. Sometimes clients don't like having the campaigns paused. They'd rather kind of eat the empty unattributed ad spend than they would turn them off. This is going to be a gut check call with each client. But again, if it's going to be a really short period of time or you can make the change yourself, you probably don't need to pause campaigns. Just keep them running. But if the change is going to take longer than a day, I would definitely suggest pausing the campaign so as not to have any additional issues coming out of it. Now, obviously, if the problem was performance tracking, you're going to want to fix that tracking. That's a very easy one to get sorted out. Once your tracking is fixed, if you're using smart bidding strategies, I highly encourage you to use data exclusions to exclude the performance data from the time frame that your conversion tracking was down. We've got a video at the top of the screen right now that'll show you how to use data exclusions to make sure that you're not feeding your bid strategies bad conversion data. And they're pretty easy to set up. You just have to add in a couple of dates, know when your conversion tracking was down, when it got fixed, and then you're on your way. Now, the account that I showed you earlier when conversion tracking flatlined, that's going to be a rare scenario. That's something where we have to turn conversion tracking off for privacy reasons. There's not a way around it. We have to turn it off for right now. So that is going to be a scenario where we need to change our bid strategy permanently to manual bidding because I don't like maximized clicks. I want more control over it than that. But we do not have any conversion tracking in that account anymore. So if it's going to be a long term change, you might need to do what we did and change your bid strategy or you might need to completely change your campaign tactics away from conversion based outcomes and focus on more engagement, brand awareness, have an entire different set of KPIs if your conversion tracking is something that cannot be fixed in a short period of time. And in a short period of time, I'm talking within a month or two, you might be able to just pause your campaigns or switch them over into manual bidding for a little bit. You could launch some additional campaigns otherwise, but you could probably turn it around pretty quick. If you're looking at a time frame of three to six months, now you're going to need to start rethinking what your advertising strategy is. Should you be advertising in the first place? There's a lot of questions that'll be raised from that. But overall, no matter what the cause of your conversion tracking headache, there's always going to be a way forward, whether you are excited about the proposition of it or not, to be honest. Obviously, anytime you log in and conversion tracking is broken, that's going to be just a bad day. No one likes a fire drill, but hopefully this rundown has given you an idea of everywhere that we look when conversion tracking is broken and will help you figure out how to troubleshoot it next time around so you know the steps to go through, you understand what the implications are, and you have an idea of what you can do based on your findings. If you have any additional questions about when conversion tracking breaks in Google Ads or anything else in the Google Ads platform, leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.